Hey friends, did you know with Azure Arc enabled data services that you can bring SQL managed instance and Postgres hyperscale to any Kubernetes infrastructure, no matter where that may be? Lior Kamrat's gonna tell me how today on Azure Friday. Hey friends, I'm Scott Hansman and it's Azure Friday. I'm here with Lior Kamrat and we're gonna talk about Azure Arc enabled data services today. How are you? I'm good, Scott. You know, it's good to be back. It is. It's nice to see you. I always like to see what's on your shelf, and I always feel like my office is cool, and then I see your office, and now I need to take it to the next level. And that's exactly yeah, well, what we're going to do today with this Azure. This is how we roll, Scott. This is how we roll. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. So so last time, maybe tell us about what we talked about last time on Azure Friday so folks can take a look at that episode as well. Yeah. So last time when we are on Azure Friday, we talked about Azure Arc enabled Kubernetes. We did like a nice demo around cloud and edge, right? How you can manage, how you can do fleet management for Kubernetes, GitOps across cloud and edge on premises. We had some Raspberry Pis uh, gizmos going on. Um, and today we're going to talk about Azure Arc enabled data services. All right. That's going to make data available to everyone everywhere, no matter where they are and how they use their data. Yes. Yes, exactly. So I know, let me share my screen and we can talk about the architecture and you know like always like we how, how we like to roll we're going to do a cool demo um and show how we can uh, how we can control data services across cloud and edge all right so, like plan. Yeah. so uh what i'm showing you right now is the architecture for azure Arc enabled data services and uh to take a step back you know when it comes to azure Arc enabled data services what we're doing is we're making um our own data services azure sql managed instance and postgres sql hyperscale approachable outside of Azure, right? And uh, if you remember in our previous uh, previous conversation on Azure Friday, we talked about this notion of projecting resources, right? And uh, while projecting resources is taking resources that are deployed or workloads that are deployed outside of Azure and bring those into our control plane, this is really going by on the opposite side, which means that we are able to deploy SQL Managed Instance and Postgres on Kubernetes clusters that are not actually uh, uh, located physically on Azure. So today we're going to talk about that. Would, is it a fair statement to say that what Azure Arc provides is kind of location transparency to these services? Um, yeah, you can say that. I mean, location transparency or uh, kind of a way for you to bring our services to any infrastructure, really, um, just being generalized about that. Uh, hmm. That's really what it brings. Interesting, because people, yeah. when they're doing this kind of work, they have to think about the software-defined networking and all the different structures about like, uh, in this case, looking at your example, there's these boxes and sometimes those boxes represent subnets. Sometimes they represent logical units. Sometimes they represent specific nodes or um, pods that are running within within Kubernetes. It kind of depends right. on what the, the boxes and lines are representing. Yeah, so here really what we're targeting, like our deployment unit is really Kubernetes or our infrastructure unit is Kubernetes. So what we're doing here is we're, basically using our data controller, right? With, this is the component. This is kind of the brain of the octopus, right? The data controller talks and responsible for deploying the actual services, but also reporting back to Azure, right? Because at the end, right, you want to get that telemetry, that billing, um, and all the integration. And as you can see on the left, um, that also enable uh, the native tooling prospect, meaning that a data administrator or a Kubernetes administrator doesn't need to change, uh, you know, the way he goes by and managing infrastructure and this type of stuff. So that's really kind of where it sits in that in that portfolio, bringing those services in a native way um, to, uh, okay. to outside of Azure. So location transparency is a simplistic way of looking at it. This is really a, a formal uh, unified control plane on an API that is already understood and with tooling that is already understood. So whether someone's using the portal, the Azure CLI, or, or a cube cuddle, they they have one control plane, and Azure Arc makes it transparent underneath that. Exactly, exactly. It's really about how we go by and integrating with Azure Resource Manager. Correct. Very cool. Very cool. Everything is an Azure resource. Bring whatever makes you happy. Exactly. Exactly. Very cool. Okay. Now now I understand. Yeah. So, um, should we do the demo? Let's do the demo. Let's do the demo. So. What we're going to do today, we're going to take uh, a GKE cluster and we're going to show the process of deploying SQL managed instance on that GKE cluster, right? In previous Azure Friday, we had GKE cluster, we had Raspberry Pi, and this is continuing this messaging around, you can use whatever Kubernetes cluster that you may have, but you're going to deploy 
a native Azure uh, service like Azure SQL Managed Instance. So what I'm showing you right now is a resource group, right? That resource group already have an Azure Arc enabled Kubernetes cluster onboarded. That Kubernetes cluster is actually a GKE cluster. And to show you that it, this is really a GKE cluster, and we'll talk about the other resources that we're seeing here. This is the Azure Arc enabled Kubernetes cluster, right? I'll click that. We can see some uh, some metadata coming in, and also. Uh, to show the uh, to show our viewers that this is actually a GKE cluster, we also have uh, uh, that open in Google Cloud Platform, right? So kind of connecting the dots here for uh, for our viewers. So I'll come back to uh, I'll come back to uh, to the GKE cluster. Let's talk about the other resources that uh, that we have here. So we have custom location, we have the data controller, and we also have a log analytics workspace. The custom location responsible for Mapping a location, which is the uh, which is the Kubernetes cluster, and the namespace inside that Kubernetes cluster, to where the data service is actually going to get deployed. That's the SQL managed instance. We'll see that in a second here, and the data controller that is already uh, created. Right, the data controller, like we said, that's the component, the service that's responsible for connecting that service into Azure. That's the brain of the octopus. So, what we're going to do now is we're going to go to Azure Arc Center. Right, and we're going to start the process of deploying a SQL managed instance. Now, this can take a while, but we're going to show how the pods, you know, gets created, and then we're going to flip to an already good to go environment, so we can see how we can abuse some of those services and actually show the uh, the value here. So, what we're seeing here is Azure Arc uh, Center. Right, this is the place when you can go by and deploy all your Azure Arc services, manage those, uh, so forth, so forth. So, uh, this is your uh, starting point when it comes to Azure Arc. What I'm going to do, I'm going to go here to SQL Managed Instances. And as you can see, we have a breadth of services that we're bringing to Azure Arc, right? Starting with Azure Arc enabled servers, Kubernetes that we talked about, data services. We also have app services in, in preview and machine learning in preview. So very exciting stuff uh, going on in this space. Um, so I'll go to SQL Managed Instance. And what we will do is we're going to start the process of creating that instance. Now, I already have an instance created, which we're going to uh, which we're going to abuse later on in this demo. But first, what we're going to do is we're going to start the creation, uh, the creation process. Um, the deployment of SQL Managed Instance required few parameters. So let's go over those parameters. The first thing that I'm going to do, I'm going to select the resource group. Um, I'm just going to call it, call it SQL MI Friday, just for fun. And here's the custom location that we're referring to. That's the first mapping that needs to be done. That custom location represent a namespace inside that Kubernetes cluster. And now we have the service type. When you're deploying a data service, data service, right, you need to choose what type of network stack it will get deployed on, right? Now, the way that this is done is we are mapping the type of the Kubernetes cluster that you have. We call that profiles. In this case, we're using uh, Google Kubernetes engine. And that maps the storage classes, the networking, and all that. And all you need to do is to choose if you want to deploy with a load balancer, which will give you an external IP to that, uh, to that data service, in our case, SQL Managed Instance, or you want to use a node port, which means that that instance will get a private IP. And the only way to get to that uh, instance will be from via, um, you know, a jump box or something inside the VNet. So for the sake of this demo, I'm going to go with uh, with the load balancer. And you can see here the compute and storage. This is where we're going to control the type of resources that we can uh, that we can allocate to that service. Now, today with SQL Managed Instance, we have two tiers. One tier that is already in GA, general purpose, and the second tier that's going to go GA pretty soon, business critical. Now, the difference between the two is that General purpose is basically um, a single replica that's going to get that's going to get deployed on the cluster, and the business critical is uh, going to give you three replicas or two to three replicas, depends on what you want to what you want to do. So that's really around high availability. So you can see here that if I'll click preview, uh, sorry, if I'll click the business critical, you will see those three replicas. So you can choose choose from, and the rest is just uh, compute. Um, allocation and storage allocations. So like I said, we're mapping that into the storage class of Kubernetes, so your data service will actually get deployed. So uh, we'll continue the uh, we'll continue the uh, deployment process, and all you need to do is just uh, do um, just you know username and password for your for your SQL managed instance, and at that point you're good to go. Now. I'm going to hit the uh, I'm going to hit the next here, and we'll kick it off that deployment. We'll do a bit of validation, and the first thing that I want to show you, right? We're going to kick off that uh, that deployment. So 
At this point, I'm switching to my uh, to my jump box machine inside uh, inside GCP, right? That machine is the machine that I use to deploy this GKE environment. And to show you what is happening in the backend, um, I'll uh, I'll go and do kubectl get pods, and I'll use the Arc namespace. That's the namespace that I deploy the data services, um, or I am deploying to the data services that uh, that you're seeing right now. And those data services are actually located here. So you can see already here that the SQL MI Friday is in container creating state, right? That means that the, um, and you know what, let's add the watch command so we can see that in action. So the what we did here is, is the R controller, the data controller that we already deployed before that demo is now sending uh, the execution command to Kubernetes. Basically, is a, it's a wrapper right around kubectl commands. and what it does is send that command and deploy the data service, right? So you can see the SQL managed instance gets deployed. So this is going to take a few minutes. So can I can I ask a, an, yeah, an, an, an ignorant question here? Yeah. And, I, and, I, and I, hopefully the audience is thinking the same thing because I just want to make sure I understand. So this right here are the pods from the point of view of the cube cuddle, which is talking to the 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 the, the G the GC uh, P, the Google. Yeah. Uh, that's that's it's they're the they're the Kubernetes. Um, exactly. Controller and Kubernetes control has a number of pods, but is that a Azure SQL instance running inside Google? No, it's a proxy to one running inside Azure, right? Well, actually, it's physically a SQL managed instance um, uh, that is running as pod on top of that Google Kubernetes engine Kubernetes cluster. That's really what it is. So it's literally taking the service and bring that outside of Azure and gets deployed on a Kubernetes cluster that is physically located outside of Azure, which is- Okay, so it's know, an Azure managed SQL instance. Exactly. The, the compute of it is operating in this Google context. Everything, yes, the compute, everything. the storage, everything gets gets deployed on that Google Kubernetes engine, uh, Google Kubernetes engine cluster, yes. Okay, correct. so yeah. it's not proxied from Google to us. It's not like a virtual, uh, node and some of the things that have been done in the past with Kubernetes, where where, we, where you're fooling Kubernetes into thinking that it's happening there, but you're really proxying data somewhere else. It's it's running fully within this context. That is correct. Yes, and as you can see, the pods are starting to get you know to get created. So to answer your question, you can see that we have physical pods and containers inside those pods mm. that that are located on that Kubernetes cluster. Like real and nodes, not virtual nodes. Nothing is virtual here. This is you know uh, these are uh, SQL managed instance pods that gets deployed, and and also what I can show you is uh, the uh, the volumes, right, and the storage yeah, class. Yeah. So let's yeah, do that. And also, oh. what, what what container registry this is pulling what image from? Yeah, good question. So this is coming from MCR, uh, Microsoft Container Registry. So everything is secured, gets you know governed. Uh, so you're getting those containers uh, from MCR, and we also have a disconnected mode that you can actually download those containers to your registry on premises or you know, wherever that may be and use those, uh, those images. Um, so yeah. Yeah. That's really, so, that's, that, that really just crystallizes the power of arc right there. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. I mean, it, it takes for, for people that, you know, didn't have a chance to actually hit that deploy button. The moment that you do that, everything starts to click, right? Because you start seeing those pods, you start seeing those volumes, right? As you can see here, right? You see, you see, you actually see volumes that gets created for that SQL, right? You can see here the backup volume, right? You can see here the data volume and the logs, right? These are real storage uh, disks that get spin up on GCP um, that uh, are allocated for that SQL managed instance. All right, yeah. now I get it. Now yeah. I get it. Yeah, this is really just a toolkit of awesomeness. You can go and now that you know that you can do this, it, it opens up a whole world of, of opportunities. Right. Right. And so let me show you something here. I want to show you how things looks like after everything gets deployed and, you know, we have all the automation and we have a project, right? We talked about it in the in our previous uh, Azure Friday. We talked about the Jumpstart project. We'll show how that fits into the picture. Before I'm going to do that, I'm sw I'll switch back to Azure, right? Just to show you the resource that gets created, right? You can see here that this resource is still being created and it's a real resource, right? You see, this is an Azure resource that got deployed. Um, so, you know, no smoke and mirrors here. This is really a SQL managed instance that is now deployed on a Google Kubernetes um, engine cluster. Wow. Yeah. So 
to maybe take it to the next level, right? I wanted to show you an environment that is fully deployed. Um, and I wanted to show you how the operation aspects uh, look on this type of environment. So to do that, um, I'm using project. You know, we created with Azure Arc, we created this, uh, this awesome project. It's called uh, the Azure Arc Jumpstart project. And as part of that project, we created tons of scenarios. We have automations um, and a lot of cool things um, for um, our own uh, employees, right, to get trained on, customers, partners. It's a community open source project, right? And as part of that project, we also created um, a product, this product called Arcbox. And Arcbox is really our way to provide you with a full-blown Azure Arc environment, whether you want to do Azure Arc enabled servers, Kubernetes, or data services. Um, this gives you everything you need. So everything gets deployed for you automatically. And we also provide in some sprinkles on top of that, which is the operational um, aspect that we're going to show. So um, at the end of this, uh, at the end of this uh, uh, demo, I'll show you where it is in the Jumpstart project. Um, okay. Yeah. So what I have here is a Jumpstart um, Rbox client machine, right? It's kind of similar to the GKE machine. Um, a nice bonus is that when you're deploying Rbox, you also get in server 2022 that just went out. So Again, just a bonus. You can start playing around with Server 2020, uh, 22 um, uh, right of the right of the box. So, when you're deploying uh, when you're deploying Azure Arc enabled data services, you're also getting some uh, some additional components uh, with that. So, let's see what are these components. Um, I'll open another PowerShell session um, inside that uh, inside that machine, and for this uh, for this one, I'm gonna query the pods and the services that are uh, that are deployed. Um, on this cluster. Now, what is this cluster? Before that, we did Google Kubernetes Engine. But actually, this one is a cluster API cluster, a Kubernetes based on cluster API. Now, um, people that are not familiar with the cluster API project, um, what, uh, what this project is all about is really deploying um, an unmanaged Kubernetes cluster in a managed environment. It's kind of funky that way, right? Because um, you know, people that used to work with Azure are used to AKS. Um, AWS have their own flavor with EKS, GKE with Google, Tanzu with VMware. But all of these deployments, right, um, are a managed deployments or managed services. Cluster API gives you the opportunity to deploy a Kubernetes cluster in an unmanaged fashion. And the reason that you want to do that is because sometimes you want to have more granular control on the NERD knobs. Um, on the deployment, how things look like. And the way Cluster API does that is using something called uh, providers, right? So you have an Azure provider, you have an AWS provider, a vSphere provider. And what it does, it basically take uh, the notion of the infrastructure and adapt the deployment of Kubernetes to that infrastructure, right? So every time that you are deploying this Cluster API, it deploys a set of virtual machines. So to show you that, and then we'll come back to these pods and all that, you just, again, to connect the dots for, for the audience here, I'll switch back to my uh, I'll switch back to my uh, uh, to my portal here, and I'll go to another resource group. This is our Box Friday resource group, and as you can see, we have tons of resources here. We have seventy nine resources gets deployed as part of our Box. But what is interesting is the fact that you don't see an AKS cluster here, right? And again, this is a, a cluster API that got that got onboarded as an Azure Arc enabled Kubernetes cluster, which is the fundamental building block for you to go on with data services. So what we're doing is we're onboarding that cluster API, and then we're deploying automatically those data services on top of that, which is uh, which is what we are showing right here um, in this machine, right? So all the services that you're seeing right here are basically deployed on this cluster API. So you can see that we already deployed that SQL managed instance, right? Like we did before, we have the data controller. We also have PostgreSQL, right? That's another data service that you can you can deploy as part of this Azure Arc enabled data services umbrella. So PostgreSQL hyperscale is also included and we're deploying that for you. What I also want to show you is this type of pods, right? And what are they all about? We talked about the operational aspect. So what you want to do with Azure Arc enabled data services, we want to get you closer to this unified operation state, right? Where you already get all the tools that you're familiar with, with your, you know, with the Kubernetes ecosystem. So for you to feel comfortable when you are monitoring or extending your monitoring and operational capabilities. So the metrics, uh, the metrics pod that you see here, and the metrics, sorry, the metrics UI pod that you see here, and all the other ones, and the logs are actually a Grafana and a Kibana deployments that you are getting outside of the box 
with Azure Arc enabled data services. And you can see that we already have services, load balancer services on that Kubernetes cluster that got deployed automatically, right? And these are the ones that we're going to approach right now and show how we are actually monitoring and abusing that SQL managed instance. So to do that, first of all, I want to show you Data Studio, right? As part of our box deployment, you're also getting Data Studio deployed. And not just that, you're also getting the SQL managed instance and the Postgres SQL that is deployed automatically already configured right in Data Studio. The way that we're doing this is because Data Studio, at the end of the day, is a JSON-based uh, uh, descriptor, right? It has a JSON-based descriptor, right, which you can control, you can manipulate. So what we did as part of the automation, we already connected those instances, and we already deployed the AdventureWorks database. So right off the box, no pun intended, you will have something to play around with. Uh, so you already have that AdventureWorks databases deployed. And again, these are SQL managed instance and Postgres SQLs that are deployed physically on that cluster API. Mm -hmm. So what we're going to do is I'll show you the Grafana, right? And then we're going to run a query that will simulate a stress test um, on that. And we're going to see how that looks like and connect everything. Um, so here's the Grafana dashboard, right? This is what you're getting out of the box. This is, you know, if you're in the Kubernetes space, Grafana, um, you know, a market leader when it comes to uh, monitoring and operation, operational aspect of Kubernetes environments. So um, uh, we're, no, we're no stranger to that. And we also have Kibana, right? So with the Kibana thing, uh, what you can do is you can do log analytics um, and you can do log management, right? So just as an example, if I'll do here the discover, you can see that I'm getting logs already out of this environment, right? Um, what I want to show you is the out of the box dashboards that we're getting, right? So I'll go here to manage and you can see that we already have a bunch of templates here, right? We have the host node metrics, pods, basically the Kubernetes um, uh, dedicated dashboards um, for, for this cluster. We also have Postgres, and we also have SQL managed instance metrics. So I'll go to the SQL managed instance metrics, and these are real metrics, like live metrics that are coming um, from the deployment that we did. So this is, a, uh, this is basically a relaxed environment, right? We're not, we're not creating any stress here. Everything is OK. You can see everything is, is stable, right? So we're running that refresh every five seconds. What I want to do is I want to show you how I'm doing um, how I'm performing a bit of a stress on this cluster, and how does that translate to uh, to Grafana? I have here a tool, SQL uh, SQL Query Stress, and what I did, I just took a query um, um, and pasted it here, so I will use that to generate the load. So what we're doing, we're basically running that query, as you can see, um, 100k iterations, um, and using four threads, right? So again, just creating some stress on the system. What I will do, I will just uh, you know hit the go button, and you can see that this is starting to run. Now, what hap what's happening in the background is that we are uh, basically nuking the SQL inst instance and um, and creating that dense stress because that's the way we're going to show how things looks like in Grafana. So we'll come back to Grafana here, and as you can see, the trend is starting to go up, right? So this is just a batch request, and you will see that across the board with other with other dashboards that the trend is actually going up, right? So we are starting to increase, increase the stress on the system. The reason that I wanted to show you this is because this is a fully comprehensive uh, deployment that you are getting, right? So it's not just about the data services, the pure data services that we're deploying. It's also about giving you that experience that you can go ahead, use that, and start monitoring and operational uh, and operate op doing some operations on your environment um, right at day one. So that's what I have to show you today, Scott. This is pretty cool stuff, and you know we have more to come. Yeah, it is deeply powerful. There's a lot to absorb here just in the Kubernetes space, but the idea that I'm seeing is that you all have created a toolkit for us to uh, do whatever we want, wherever we want, with whatever cloud we want, but you're enabling us to use the APIs, the CLIs, and the tools that we're used to using, and I think that's really, really powerful. Yes, exactly. And uh, for the uh, for the viewers that want to start getting their hands dirty with this, um, I wanted to give you the reference to uh, you know to the Jumpstart project. So I'll go back to my uh, to my Edge browser, and this is the Jumpstart project. And the nice thing about that, Scott, is that in our previous uh, in our previous Azure Friday, this was this was just a Git repository. And today we have a full blown project with a lot of scenarios. So if you want to go ahead and try our box, which is what um, which is what I used as part of 
as part of my automation for preparing for this demo, you have all the instructions on the architecture and how things are built, how to use it, and really how to start taking advantage of Azure Arc and learning the platform. Very cool. Folks can check that out at azurearcjumpstart.io. I am learning all about Azure Arc Enabled Data Services today on Azure Friday. Hey, thanks for watching this episode of Azure Friday. Now I need you to like it, comment on it, tell your friends, retweet it, watch more Azure Friday.